Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. And we're going to be looking at a build that, you know, it has been neglected for a while now. Literally just time constraints and run into a few snags. But if you've been following this Minotaur build for Kiki Mustang, um, you'll be up to date of what's been going on. If this is the first video that you're seeing of this build, I suggest going and watching the other videos in the series to get an idea of why the build is like this um, and in this configuration. Um, we're getting to the point where I was going to be ready to coat it and then James actually said to me he got a red line and sent him a HPA stock and the idea is to run it with the HPA stock so he doesn't have to mess about with the lines and a tank on his back or anything like that. Um, this will all be, obviously it's not done yet, but the uh, airline will be routed through into this stock and then you have like a little mini HPA tank on this air stock that they do. So there's been a few uh, difficulties fitting that just because it's this body. It's not the issue of the red line stock, although there are issues with that product that I'll go over in a moment. Um, it's mainly the body, the Novrich body, because it's got this quick detached spring guide that comes through the back of the rifle. Um, there's basically a big open empty space here where usually fitting this stock you'd have like a little hole you put the bolt in you don't need you know a long bolt um, you probably use the bolt that comes in the kit with it that would bolt directly to the adapter and you know you perhaps chop the um, back of the stock down a little bit just so it mates up properly and that would be it'd be nice and easy but unfortunately this one you've got this big open space and nowhere for a screw to be fixed in so I've used uh, one of the brackets that was in there originally uh, that's been drilled out and then I just I've been hunting down through all my bits to find the perfect bolt which I've got now so that now bolts through there into the stock and that holds it on I've got to route the, the airline as I've said um, this is the configuration the suppressor will be going on that's one of the last machining jobs to do to make to get that to fit a 40 mil counterclockwise thread because they're 60 mil normally um, in hindsight probably what I would have done is in, I was trying to keep it versatile putting the 14 mil thread in there so if James switches it up and he wants to run a flash hide or whatever he wants this is a very versatile thread where most airsoft, airsoft accessories will go straight onto a 14 mil negative that's why I did it um, if he was only going to use this I would have just done this to 16 clockwise and then this suppressor would have gone straight on there um, there's also uh, issues with his launcher as well so I've managed to source some uh, replacement hardware because you'll see two of the screws are missing one's completely false and you'll see here they're all a bit mismatched but I just wanted to get these bolts so that I've uh, managed to get those screws so we're replacing those and this does need a service because I think it is leaking a little bit so we've got a tag service kit with all the new fresh o-rings to go in there and that will get sorted so yeah, it's just one thing after another that I'm waiting for. And the, the last thing was just time. I just don't have much free time at all now. Um, so it's just getting around to that. So let me pop this upper receiver off. Apart from that, the uh, rest of the rifle is pretty much ready to be coated. And we'll be going for a green theme. And then what James can do is he can craft camo and stuff for the gun uh, on his end. The green will just give like a nice base. It'll get rid of the majority of this black color. So we'll take the upper off here. So if we were using a more premium AEG, we probably wouldn't have had as many issues. Um, the upper, using the Geisley, I think this is the Mark IV. This is actually a size I don't think Geisley did, but this was off one of my uh, MWSs, and I've sort of sacrificed that and put it on James's build. And you'll see here the fixture. So you've got this big aluminium block at the back here. And then I've just managed to find a bolt that goes through. So drilled that block through, cut the bolt down to size where it was about the right length. Obviously it took a little bit of time to get that right. What I will be doing, you'll notice the gearbox screws are missing because what I'm going to be doing is this is going to be, this is a pain to get on and off. So I'm not going to, normally what people do is if they're securing this to the receiver, they'll chop the back of the, um, the gearbox out because it's not really needed. Uh, I've seen a few people fit these stocks and that's what they do. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be keeping the structural strength with the gearbox casing there. So what I'm probably going to do is put a channel in the side here, 
which will allow us to get an Allen key, formal Allen key in, and then we can tighten and loose it off where we want to. Um, the only thing I don't like about this stuck, he, he is getting a slightly shorter tank, so it doesn't stick out the end as you'll see here. So this is just a placeholder, just keep that in mind. But what I'm not a massive fan of this stock is, um, you can't actually turn the stock on and off onto the regulator because these bars are in the way. So if it was me, what I'd have done is when they've laser cut these plates out of steel, I would have just elongated it a little bit, dropped the two bars like five mil down. This would have sat a little bit lower, but I think that would have been worth, because you've got plenty of space there. You know, um, red line, if you are listening, I think what I would have done is drop that down a little bit and that will enable you to put the air tanks on and off without having to do it. At the moment with these air tanks, I have seen a couple of people doing the same thing as well, is you have to actually take the stock apart. So another thing I wanted to mention before I do that, so this, this was tight and uh, there's so much flex in it um you know it's not rigid at all but if it works it works the main reason for fitting this stock like i say is he doesn't want to be dealing with airlines and tanks on his back this will make it completely um all situated on the rifle so if he decides to ditch the rifle he hasn't got to worry about disconnecting the airlines or anything like that so what i've been doing is i've just been loosening it. i haven't been taking it off all the way just been loosening it, that will pivot down, and then we can remove the tank. This is, of course, an empty tank here. And it's just the fill, the fill nipple that fouls on the two stock struts. So we'll tighten this back up here. And that's where we are with the Minotaur. So I haven't completely abandoned it, don't worry, because some people did ask what was going on with the build. It's just a the case of my time is just so taken up now i obviously have my main day job the website has become selling obviously my products on the website uh, the Agri precision website that is that has become a full-time job which means i'm running two full-time jobs and then doing this stuff on the side, this is like a third job. So I'm almost running three full-time jobs at the moment. I have no spare time whatsoever. Um, and I have started taking a little bit of extra time out for me. But if I'm doing that, literally nothing's getting done. And that's the problem. Um, I have booked some time off when I'm video recording this on the Monday. I have booked a block section of this whole week off for my main job. Just so I can catch up on some builds. There's various NGRSs and other bits and pieces that people have been very patiently waiting a very long time for. Um, and I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you the facts. So that's the way it is. Uh, life does get in the way. So I wanted to get this completed. I managed to sort the uh, stock system out today and how that's being held. You'll see it's not completely tight because it's a bugger to get to that screw. Um, so I'll be fixing that. So I'll be channeling this giving gaining access what i'll probably do is modify this allen key so that can be slotted in at the back for a quick turning the stock on and then what i'll probably do is just shorten this allen key on this end so you can get the torque on it because at the moment it doesn't quite fit in and then you can torque the stock down and make sure it's tight um and that's where we are with it everything else is pretty much as we left it bar on everything that's been done all those components are ready so as soon as I've modified this, um, routed the air line through into the back of the stock, just check that's functioning, this will be ready for coating. Uh, I think I'm going to go with like a Ranger green or like an OD green on this one. This was actually an OD green, um, but it came out a little bit too glossy, I think a bit too much hardener when I originally coated this. Um, the Ranger green seems a little bit more subtle, a little bit darker, which might be better for James. He's, you know, a ghillie air softer, so he's going to be, you know, covering this stuff up to make sure he's nice and invisible anyway. So the colour's not really that important. Um, these trademarks that we put on, both the Minotaur logo and his logo on the back, they're deep etched. So once it's covered, 
they'll kind of look like this here where it's embossed. No idea where that cap is. That was off the rifle when it came to me. Um, and then it's just tidying some bits and pieces up. I did want to put a slimline grip on this. So I had one of these Aries Amoeba slimline grips, which would have been nice. Would have been a lot more steeper angle on the grip, which is always good. Um, and it's a lot more, it's a lot thinner. So it's uh, it's a, you know, a bit more realistic. But when I was trying to fit this on, this Novridge gun will not accept this grip for some reason. And I don't really want to start modifying grips and, you know, sort of bodging stuff on there. So I've just put the standard grip back on for now. Um, once... I've rerouted the airline. I think I have the cap for the bottom, so I'll put the cap back on and we'll be uh, rocking and rolling. So this is just an update on the build. We're almost there. Of course, when all that's coated and done and the suppressor's done, and that'll be coated as well, I'll be moving on to this and I'll probably just do a quick guide on how to do that service kit. Um, so thanks very much for tuning in. I hope I've cleared up a few, uh, a few questions. Um, and we've got uh, another MWF video coming up with my new Puck uh, short stroke kits. So those will be coming out very, very soon. I do want to get round to the two, uh, VFC 249. It just, there's things getting in the way. So I'll have to get round to it as I do. Um, but yeah, as always, from me and Bench, we'll see you in the next video.